Hey, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are, well you are, sitting on the desk. A lovely tripod. Dylan is actually on the floor, just FYI, because I don't know. He just wanted to be there. I don't ask questions anymore. I just say, yes child, do what you so desire. Anyway, hi. How you guys doing? Today we are actually on the fourth round of my five star reading predictions videos. So this idea was started by Mercedes over at Mercedes Bookish Musings. I'm sure you all already subscribed to her. Uh, she came up with this idea to have a stack of books that she thought might be five stars so that she could grab one if she was in a reading slump. I kind of took this idea and I've applied it to my backlist so that I can help me get through some backlist books that I've had on my shelf for a long time. So in that vein, I have picked five books. I picked five books for this TBR, this most recent round. And after I review these, I will tell you my next five. So let's start with whatever's on the top, because that will be easiest. <laughs> so the first book I have to tell you about is Binti. I put this on my list, and I actually end up reading the entire trilogy. And the, this, this one actually is a front list, but still, I end up reading the whole thing. So these are... Uh, novellas and they are Nebula and Hugo winning award, award winning novels, whatever. I can't do words today. Just know that they're great. This is about Binti. She comes from a minority ethnicity on Earth and she's the first of hers to attend this like basically Ivy League intergalactic college, university, whatever. And she is going to be uh, the first one ever to attend so she gets on the ship to get there and something bad happens while she's on the way and that's in the first one and i can't tell you what the other two are about because those are obviously spoilers um i really enjoyed this series it's not a five star read for me but it is probably four four and a half just because it's so well done and dylan's gonna go pout by the door i tell you he's a teenager right Anyway, so I really enjoy these by Nydia Okorafor, and they're published by Tor, so I would highly recommend these. So the next book I have, I just recently finished, and it is a probably a new favorite book, and that is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is Jhumpa Lahiri's first novel, her short story collection, The Interpreter of Maladies, won the Pulitzer Prize, and so I think this is published in 2003. So this is about an Indian American family, and in this family, uh, a family member uh, names the child. So the mom's uh, grandmother sent names over from India, but they got lost in the mail. So they're like, we have to wait, but then you have to register a name. So in their culture, you have a pet name that's used with the family, and then you have a good name or a legal name that's like your actual name, that your formal name. They weren't able to register him under his real name, they registered under his pet name, which is Gogol, which is a Russian author that his dad likes for various reasons that we find out throughout the novel. And this entire book is about his identity, about Gogol's identity with his name, and uh, he eventually wants to change his name and just the turmoil that comes with that. And at first, I didn't know what to make of this book. And as you go along, you see Gogol struggle through his, you know, young adult life, into his adult life and his career and his relationships with women and different things and how he relates to his identity. And it's one of those books that you don't see what's happening or what has happened until it's already happened. And then you look back on the book and you realize, oh my goodness, this is what she was doing. And I was just so devastated when this book ended and I ended up actually getting the movie on Amazon and watching it because it came out in 20, uh, 2007. And I just love this book. And I can't go into all of the different reasons and all of the different imagery and different things that Jhumpa Lahiri has put into this book without giving you loads of spoilers, but just know that this book is absolutely fantastic. It's not even really a long book, but she has put all of her amazing talent into this book. I have yet to give a book by Dimple Harry, anything other than five stars, because she's that talented and she puts so much meaning into such a small amount of space. So definitely check out Dimple Harry if you haven't already. Her short story collection, Interpreter Maladies, is a great place to start. Um, I really also enjoyed her collection of essays called In Other Words, which she wrote in Italian and then was translated uh, into English. So um, love this book, definitely five stars. Another book that I really enjoyed is Marilyn Robinson's essay collection. When I was a child, I read books, and this came out in 2012. 
This essay collection is beautiful and you guys know I love Marilyn Robinson. I did an entire author spotlight video when I first started my channel on Marilyn Robinson. I have read all of her novels and I have a couple and I have like a handful of essay collections left because she actually has written more essays than anything else. This particular collection though it's titled When I Was a Child I Read Books really has nothing to do with her personal experience. It's just an essay collection on her faith and how that interacts with her politics and her, her study of humanities and philosophy. So as a Christian woman and as a woman who loves to study theology, I always wanted more women theologians and because of obvious reasons uh, there aren't a lot of women theologians, uh, sexism, and so I have just been dying to read more. I want to read more amazing women of faith. And you know, she's a Congregationalist, which is not my denomination, but we're close enough that this she's just like an oasis in a wilderness. I love what she writes. And Marilyn Robinson doesn't just critique secular thought. She critiques her own faith and says certain groups believe this, which by then means this. And these are such amazingly rich essays. She lets no one off the hook. And I love how she has such balance to her thoughts. And together as an essay collection, I feel like you get a good view of her politics and of her philosophy. Now, that being said, they are very dense. So these aren't like personal essays that were kind of used to, you know, millennial writers writing um, or no offense to my own generation, but these are more academic essays. These are essays you have to sit down and read one and digest because they're just so in-depth and they're so rich with meaning. And she follows along this rhetoric of thought like throughout each essay and they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. And it just, I just admire her so much for what she does. And yeah, I know I just love Marilyn Robinson, but if you're not really into really academic looks into politics, philosophy, and religion, then it's probably not an essay collection that you like. Next book on my list is The Song of Achilles uh, by Madeline Miller. And I read this because I wanted to read Circe, which also came out. And I read this and I listened to the audio and I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought that she did a great job of weaving all the different myths around Patroclus and Achilles together and into a coherent novel. Um, I've talked about this already a lot on my channel, so just know I, I you know I enjoyed it. So this was one, um, and I just, I was able to find a hardback copy of the original hardback from Echo. She's now with Little Brown, so I'll be interested to see where she goes with her next novel. And she actually has a novella on Amazon. I need to find it, obviously. Last is another five-star book, which is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. I, this was a great round for me, guys. I really enjoyed this book, and while I didn't have a personal connection with it like I did many of these books, just her skill, like her skill just overwhelms you. It comes at a wave and you're like, wait, what just happened? What just hit me? And oh my goodness, she did such a good job of, she uses like this present tense and she moves through the years. There is a wide range of characters, but thankfully there's like a cast list in the front. Uh, she takes this history and she commits to an interpretation of history as historical fiction and goes for it. I can't believe everything that she did in this book and you know the story and she takes a, a lot of the story of Henry VIII and his wives and different things from the viewpoint of Thomas Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell trilogy. So I see why this one the main booker. I can't wait to read the next one but I'm trying to pace myself because the third book in the trilogy is not out yet. I can't imagine the immense amount of pressure she has because everyone wants it to also get the next man booker so she can be one of the first people, first person, definitely first woman who won the man booker three times. I think she might be the first person. If someone knows tell me. Anyway, love this book. Can't recommend it enough. Anyway, so this is really is a great book and I really enjoyed it. So definitely pick up Wolf Hall. Okay, so those were the five books that I had for that round. On to round four. So these are the five books that I am predicting I might give five stars to in the next round. First up is Maggie O'Farrell, Instructions for a Heat Wave. You guys know I love Maggie O'Farrell. I loved I Am, I Am, I Am. It's my favorite books this year. And I love this must be the place, which I buddy read with uh, Leah and Sean. That was actually my second time through it, but I was like, I love it so much. Why not? This is her next book, going backwards. So the book before This Must Be the Place is Instruction for a Heat Wave. So I actually own all of her books from Tinder Press, all the matching beautiful covers. So I'm going to be buddy reading this with Leah and yeah, we'll see what happens. But it's not as long as her other ones, so I'm interested to see what happens. 
I also don't know what that is about and I'm not going to read the back because I don't want to know. I just want to go into it blind. It's Maggie O'Farrell. But all of these link books are linked down below so if I don't describe it well enough for your liking then you can click on that and there will be plenty of descriptions and links and different things. Next up is Alice Monroe's Dear Life. This is a short story collection. Um, I'm trying to work through some of the Nobel winners as a, like a life goal and so I have never read Alice Monroe. So this is a short story collection I found at a used library sale. So this is what I'm gonna read. So I've already found it on audio. So yeah, this will be exciting and I don't know what any of these are like but I've heard nothing but great things about Alice Monroe. Next up is Where the Lion Bleeds by Desmond Ward. This is the only Desmond Ward novel I haven't read yet. And this is technically a front list reissue, but it's her debut, so it counts. It's backlist, right? Sure. So Desmond Ward, you know, is one of my favorite authors of all time. Someone described the Reading Room podcast as a love letter to Desmond Ward, and I am okay with that. So this is the last one. I have not read this one, and then I'll read all of her work. Very excited. This is actually the first book in the trilogy set in this fictional town in the Mississippi Delta. The other two are Salvage the Bones and Sing and Buried Sing. So I'm very interested to see if there are like cameos of the characters that were in this that eventually had their own books. And then I need to reread all of them and like mark all the cameos in all the different books. <laughs> because I'm like that, right? You're so extra, Kendra. You're so extra. Next, I'm sorry, the lighting is really struggling. It's like raining today, so we're just going to push through. I don't know what Dylan's doing either. Oh my goodness. Just trying to film a video universe. Next up is Beloved by Toni Morrison. I don't know what this book is about. I'm gonna, not gonna lie. I, I know it involves a woman and her child named Beloved who is a ghost or something. I've seen some spoilers accidentally in the last six months. I've never read this book because I'm reading all of Toni Morrison in order of publication. Finally reached Beloved, which is like almost the entire reason why I started this entire like reading through Toni Morrison kind of deal. But I am very excited to finally read this. We're going to be talking about it on Reading Women and discussing it. Autumn read it earlier this year and I was like, no spoilers, man. Nothing. I need to just read it. So I am so thrilled to finally be able to read what many people consider Toni Morrison's masterwork, Beloved. So stay tuned. Uh, I just, I just am so excited. Last book is actually one recommended to me by a librarian. So I went home uh, over Christmas and I actually went to my hometown library, the downtown library, and I found there that there was a librarian who was actually working at my local branch when I was a kid, now worked at the main branch. And I talked to her for a while and she gave me a tour of the library. You can go check out my Instagram stories. It's pinned on my profile um, if you want to go see that. And she was recommending books to me and I was asking her what was the best books that she read in 2017. And she said one of them was On Such a Full Sea by Chang Rae Lee. Um, this is out from Riverhead and I'm going to read to you the blurb because we're going to find out a little bit about this book together. It says visionary work from one of the most important writers of our time On Such a Full Sea takes Chang Rae Lee's elegance of prose, mastery of storytelling, and insight into themes of identity, culture, work, and love and lists them into exhilarating new plane. Stepping from the realistic and historical territories of his previous work, Lee brings us a world reinvented, a vividly imagined future, and the one girl's legendary quest to comprehend the life into which she has been born. So yeah, so I'm excited to read a book about a young girl and identity. I love books about identity. Uh, we just looked at that in the namesake. So I'm very interested to see how this turns out and to learn more about why my librarian loves this book. So yeah, I'm excited and we'll find out. I'm not sure I haven't heard too many people other people have read this book but this I think came out before I was on booktube so that might explain why but this is kind of the unknown of this list as you might guess I don't know much about it, it hasn't been on my TBR very long but uh, it is backlist and I do definitely want to read it so that is the end of this round uh, thanks again to Mercedes for the idea and thank you all for watching and I am excited to tell you more about books in the future so stay tuned, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.